This year we also have um, a few sessions related to rather broad PDF topics, like there was this color session and now there is going to be one about fonts and text in PDF. Um, what I can say from now, I don't know, doing about 15 years of support that fonts and text are by far <coughs> the most tricky and difficult things and also problems in PDF. And what I want to do is in this session to introduce you to what font tools we offer to help you to manage fonts in PDF files. And then in order to understand these tools better, we need also to understand how fonts are organized in PDF. So this will be the second part. Um, then I have a few examples, basically screenshots of photos, photos from lift problems, from font problems in PDF files. And then I want to go into more detail into our font tools. And I hope that by then, everybody of you has a better understanding of uh, the font tools in PDF Toolbox. At any time, I mean, this is really uh, technical stuff. So at any time, just interrupt me. Let me know if something remains unclear. Um, it's, it's not that much related to any new PDF Toolbox features. Uh, most of the stuff has been around for a long time now. There, there is uh, at least one feature that is rather new, but yeah, anyway, just, just let me know if, if you have any questions. So these are the font tools in PDF Toolbox. There is um, um, basically two profiles, list potential font problems, and fix potential font problems. So I want to talk about mostly the first one, the, the font checking thing. And then there is a font report, creating a font report. There is explore PDF an interactive tool. And there is explore fonts. And I will cover them at least briefly, all of them. But first, I want to start with the two profiles. So they are predefined profiles, I think, in Essential or, or Prepress, I don't know, uh, library. Um, and there is uh, the list potential font problems. And in this profile, we have uh, put all font checks that we think are uh, at least an indicator that something is difficult or even wrong in a PDF file. And um, before we now go into detail, um, I first try to translate these checks in, in, in our profile into questions. So the first check uh, that we have is character is not white space, but glyph is empty. So let me just ask who of you right now knows what that, what that means. Okay, so that we want to change. Um, so I have translated this into uh, two questions here on the left-hand side. So what actually is a glyph? And at the third uh, bullet here we have what actually is an empty glyph. And the next check is character re references not dev glyph. So what actually is a not dev glyph? Then we have font name is not unique. So okay, we, we will understand that later on. Oh, no, I forgot encoding entry prohibited for symbolic tool type font. So I've translated that into, okay, what actually is a font encoding and what is a symbolic tool type font, a symbolic font. Um, okay, next is the font is not embedded. I think that is clear. Um, then we have font reverts to not dev glyph um, as a check. So these are also, I was just saying, this is a profile, a predefined profile that you can find in PDF Toolbox. 
and that has uh, allows you to check for a font situation in a PDF file and to find out whether the font situation in the PDF file is correct or whether there are maybe any hidden problems. And what I want to do in this session is to explain a little bit what is the background of all of these checks. Um, so font reverts to not have glyph, so we need to understand what a not have glyph is, and then glyph in subset font is missing, so again, there are, we need to understand what the glyph is, and so forth. Uh, then there is no CMAP entry in a simple two-type font, and then there is a very cryptic one, type 2 CID font, CID to GID map invalid or missing. So they, they are really, most of the users just say, okay, I, I don't get that. What, what does it actually mean? They understand that there might be a problem, but what I want to achieve in this session is to explain a little bit what, why these checks are there and what, what actually is the meaning of them. So, and as a first step, so just in order to move forward, um, I need to provide a few answers. So, because if we don't have an understanding of what a glyph is, we, we, we cannot move on. So, and what you here see at the bottom is uh, our three screenshots from our font browser that allows you to uh, browse into the internals of an embedded font file in a PDF. And the glyph basically is what you find in the font listed in numbers, and if you click on a font on a glyph entry in your font, it displays the, the uh, glyph, and the glyph actually is a shape that is in the font associated with the glyph ID. So on the left hand side, this is how the font is GID, glyph ID, and then Glyph ID 52 is associated with this outline, and everybody of us who is able to read can see that this is a C. So that is a glyph, and important is a glyph is an outline. A glyph doesn't have any meaning. So the software at this point, when it, when it finds the glyph here, it doesn't know that it's a C. It just has the outline of this character. That is important to understand. Then there is a, a particular glyph, which is called not dev, which should be present in every font. Uh, and that is a fallback. So in a two-type font, that is on GID 0 by convention. So the first glyph ID in a font, in a two-type font, is a character that should be used if the glyph look up. So if no real glyph can be found for any reason, so for whatever reason the program is not able to associate a proper glyph ID, then the, uh, the, the processor, the viewer, should use the not def. So not def, not defined, means that is the glyph that is used if uh, there is no proper glyph found for the character. And then an empty glyph is just a glyph without an outline. It just and you would use that for, for a tab or for a space or for whatever. So it's, it just doesn't paint anything. So now we understand what is a glyph, what is a not def glyph, and what is an empty glyph. So in order to move forward, and after we have understood that, in order to answer the other questions, we need to dig deeper into font technology and into PDF. So that is the next part of the presentation. Um, so this is a lot of text. Um, let's start at the top. So what, what happens, or how is the connection between my PDF page and the font? Uh, internally, the font is, is uh, associated with some text that is encoded into my page via an internal font name. So that is, in this case, it's F25. So it's not, it ha doesn't have to do anything with the real font name, which would be career here. The base font name would be career there. Uh, the internal name is F25. So in most probably the next font, uh, when the PDF file has been created, would be F26 and so forth. So usually they, they are just numbered, but every PDF writer does its own, so one uses F-O instead of F, so it, it doesn't have any 
meaning it just, of course, has to be uh, uh, worked together. The page description, when it refers to the font, needs to use F F F25. And, and that is the second part here in the resources dictionary here of my page. I have a resources dictionary, and there I have a font section. And in that font section, there is the actual font uh, F25 again. And of course, this has to work together. Page description and font resources. And then in the font resources in the PDF file, you find further information like the base font name, uh, the font type, in this case it's true type, the max glyph bounding box, that's, that is uh, the, the maximum size of a glyph, and the character width. So the width of each character in the uh, font file. So that uh, characters can be uh, placed one after the other, then uh, the, the viewer needs to know the width of, of each glyph. And then, and that is optional, uh, also the font object. So only inside of this PDF resource entry for the font, there may be an embedded font. And then the font is a, a, a data stream. So that is really important to understand. If you embed a font into a PDF file that is not translated into PDF syntax, the font is more or less kept the same. So some data is removed usually, but that depends on the, on the PDF creator. Uh, most of the font is just embedded as it was in your file system before. And only parts of that information are translated into the font resource object of the PDF file. Is that understood? So this is really important. You have the, if you want, you have the PDF part of the font and you have the font part of the font. And the, the PDF part is formatted in PDF syntax, while the font part is formatted in two type syntax, type one syntax, or whatever. And these are these, these work to, together by the PDF part, which in a way uh, builds the, the way from the page description into the font file. And then finally, uh, there is optionally in the, again, we, here we are at the PDF resources, a mapping to Unicode. And we will learn that later why that is and or may be important. I uh, here, uh, it's just, uh, this is uh, uh, from our PDF browser, um, Explore PDF and PDF Toolbox. You can have a look at the internal PDF structure, and I've just indicated with arrows here, arrows here where uh, you can see that information. So there is an internal name, and this way it pays, it's TY1. You have the font resource and the PDF part that is actually everything you can see here. And then you have the base name, in this case it's quadrat sans bold with a, with a prefix. The font type is type 1, the bounding box, the character width, it's, it's an array, so we have one, 185 characters, and for each of these characters we have the width entry, and we have the actual font here embedded, which in this case is not true type, but type 1. Okay, so you can use PDF Toolbox to just look into the font resources uh, as uh, in present in the PDF file. And these font resources in the PDF files, these have to be there every time you use text or a font. But the embedded font here, that is optional. So that may as well be in your file system in the fonts folder. So now, what, what, what happens if you have in your page a code for a character? Uh, what needs the viewer then to do in order to derive from that code the actual glyph? So the first here is, there is a character code in the page description. That is just a number, it could be one byte, it could be two byte, uh, whatever. It, 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 yeah. And then you have a mapping from this code to uh, the glyph ID and the font. And that, this way from the 
character code and the page to the glyph ID and the font. That is, you have different tanks, terms for that, but you can say this is uh, the encoding or the this is a headline here, or the glyph selection, or the glyph mapping, whatever. So there are several names for this rather complex procedure. Um, and this mapping may take place via an encoding entry, and the encoding entry is in the PDF part of the font, or if that encoding entry is not present, then uh, what is called the built-in encoding takes place, and that is the encoding that is part of the font file. Is it clear? So you have in the font file, you have an encoding that may be overwritten, overwritten by an encoding entry in the, in the PDF part, but if the encoding entry is not present, then the built-in encoding is used. And then um, that encoding or glyph selection in a miracle way leads us to the glyph ID in the font. And and this is really this is the, the really complex part of the whole stuff. Um, it depends. It really depends on the situation. There are innumerable different ways to do the encoding. So first, it's different for type one fonts, which can be embedded. It's different to true type fonts or to double bind fonts. So each the encoding rules are all different for the three font types. And then even for each of for for, for each of these. There may be different ways, so these are just examples here. And uh, the, the, the goal for this session definitely is not that you remember them, so nobody really remembers them all the time, so one has to look up the PDF specification. The goal is more to make you understand that it's a rather difficult process to get from the uh, character code and the page description to the actual glyph outline. Um, yeah, so for type 1, for instance, uh, these are the old ones uh, invented by Adobe, type 1 specification. Um, they come from the postcode world, so you have a character code, just a number, as in any of these cases in the page. Then you have an uh, encoding entry that would let you know that this is using MacRoman encoding, so the font is used according to the MacRoman encoding table that associates uh, a character code with a glyph name and that the glyph name could then be space or capital L or whatever and since a type 1 font has names for glyphs internally once we have that glyph name capital L you already have the glyph in the type 1 fonts and you're done. In a true type font, true type has been invented by Apple and Microsoft as a competitor in a way, a little bit for, for uh, type 1 fonts, but also in order to have a font type that, is, uh, that would work in an Apple operating system and in a, in a Microsoft Windows operating system. And therefore, because this uh, file wants to serve both operating systems, which use different encodings, this font format is much more complex than a type 1 font, true type. Which in the beginning led to a situation where in pre-press environments, true type fonts were not allowed at all, which actually doesn't make sense. They are good and, and well defined, as well defined as type 1. But um, they're more complex, that is, that is true. So we have the character code. In this case, you don't have, uh, uh, you have an encoding entry, but this encoding entry defines custom uh, relationships <coughs> between a glyph name and the character code, but you, you have a glyph name then. But then for two type fonts, you have to go to the Adobe glyph list because in a true type font there is only its Unicode CMAP and then from there you code to the glyph ID. Again, it's not important that you remember that you only have to see that there is a major difference between type 1 fonts and type, three, type uh, 2 type fonts. And then you have two more font types in uh, PDF. Uh, both are double byte fonts. There is a CID type 0 and the CID type 2. 
And this is just yet another example. So you have a character code, you have an entry identity age, and that identity age basically means you can use the character code in the page description as the glyph ID, and then you are, you are there. So this is, in a way, is the most easiest <coughs> case here because the character code, the code is identical to the glyph ID. So this, again, I, I already introduced us, so you, you should have heard uh, at least some of that. This is an overview about all the font types in PDF. So we have two major flavors of simple fonts and two major flavors of composite fonts or two-byte fonts. Simple fonts use just one byte, and that means you are limited to 256 glyphs, while double byte fonts have a lot more. For Asian fonts, for instance, that is important. I think you know that. Um, and then for type 1, you have two flavors. There is the classic one, the old one, type 1, that really uses glyph names. And CFF stands for Compact Font Format. Adobe has developed it. Uh, once I found out for PDF uh, that the file size is a matter and then I did, they don't use any names anymore but just byte codes instead. So just to make the font file more compact. CFF. Then you have two type. Oh, yeah, then you have uh, types. These are not real fonts. So type 3 is more, yeah, you would use that for uh, decorations also, they are not really fonts and they, they use actually PDF code for encoding the glyphs. So you can, in a way, if you want, you can make this whole page to, be, to become a glyph in a uh, type 3 font. But they are, they are rare. And then there are open type, they are also rare. Open type is, uh, in a way, it's, it's, it's a container format that internally may use, uh, again, type 1 and type 2, uh, two byte. So these, basically, uh, you have here already just two font basic uh, font formats, type 1 and 2 type, and the same applies to composite fonts. So internally, a composite or double byte font is either type 0, and then it falls back to being CFF based or type 1 based, or it's type 2, and then it's 2 type based. So it's a little bit confusing, I guess, because we have, on this level, we have type 1, which is a simple font, and then we have CID type 0 and CID type 2, and one has to understand type 1 is on a very different level. So it's, it's while type 0 and type 2 are on the same level, type 1 is something completely different, or more or less, much more different than the other two. This is the one thing you may take away and the other thing is, in the end, all of these different font formats are either type 1, PostScript based, or 2 type based. And then because 2 type is more flexible, and by that also creates many problems sometimes, I also want to dig a little bit deeper into that topic. Is it, is it uh, understandable so far? So, okay. So as I've said, uh, all font types are either type 1 in the end or 2 type like. Um, and 2 type, since 2 type was designed to work on Mac and Windows, it has some advanced features. So while a type 1 font only has one built-in encoding, a 2 type font may have various encodings, and these encodings are called C maps. So this, this is an expression you will encounter frequently when you deal with fonts and with two type fonts obviously only. Um, and um, one thing you need to understand, so if C maps is written like that, like that, then usually it should refer to a two type font, while if it's written like that, uh, that is something completely different. It has also to do with fonts, but that is only in CID fonts and defines font sets, sets of fonts, while the CMAP is a mapping of, of uh, uh, IDs to glyphs. And then another special thing in two-type fonts is that they may have an embedding flag, so a two-type font may have a flag that says 
this font must never be embedded into a PDF file. That is not frequently pres present, to be honest, and frequently even it contradicts what the actual license uh, terms say. So you, you will find fonts where the license, license terms, the written license terms say this may not be embedded, but, but the embedding flag is not set, or the other way around. So it's, you cannot trust them. But um, this, the next one is more important because it also changes the encoding. Um, a tool type font may have a symbolic flag, and that flag says this font is not a regular font uh, with A, B, C, D, and so forth. This font is uh, a symbolic font, means it, it rather has symbols instead of characters, or so subdingbots, or wingdings fonts. These are examples for symbolic fonts. And the problem with that is uh, that the rules are different. So um, if a font says it's symbolic, all the encoding information in the PDF part is ignored. So there is encoding information in the PDF part that says this is McRoman encoding, but at the same time the font says I'm a symbolic flag, font. So what, would a, what should a PDF viewer do then? Should he ignore the encoding entry in the PDF file and trust the font because the font says I'm symbolic and that means you don't have to use the embolic or uh, the, 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 the encoding entry or should the viewer follow the information in the encoding entry and actually this is not defined so this is a situation where uh, uh, even in the PDF specification even in PDF 2.0 it is written in this case, it depends on the application what to do. So it's, it's undefined. And of course, this is a rather unfortunate into a situation uh, for any uh, uh, decent uh, provider of PDF software. So this is a problem that, that should be flagged. Uh, yeah, and a non-symbolic font that is rather easy then that, that should usually use either MacRoman or Binanzi. <clears throat> and then the, another special, special, specific thing on two type is that the not dev because two type other than type one doesn't have names. Uh, in type one, the not dev would have the name with the dot not dev, and in a two type one, it would just be the GID zero. So CID is not not fully correct here. It should be a the glyph ID zero. Mm -hmm. There's one question about the symbolic. Do you happen to know how is Acrobat, as an example, treating the symbolic flag? Do they yeah, we, we recently had an example. So what I what I guess what they do is they try to first they try to follow the symbolic flag, but if that fails, uh, then they just use the encoding form of uh, information. So we recently had a support case, and I will have that later on, where Acrobat displayed it correctly while we think it's not correct, and that was a symbolic flag. And if you, a symbolic, symbolic flag, if you ignore the symbolic flag and follow the encoding information, then the glyphs are displayed, and I, I think Acrobat is doing that. So but it's, again, there is no way to find that out other than to find a file that has this problem and put that into Acrobat. So. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much through with, uh, I think, the really difficult technical stuff, so just, uh, but we, I think one, one more thing we need to cover. Uh, so far we only talked about glyph mapping, so we are, by now we only have the, the shapes of the glyphs, but we don't have a meaning to that. So that means we can create that page, but we are not able to find text in the page, or to copy pay, uh, text from there, because that all would mean that we have more than just uh, the outlines. We would have to know that this is a P, a D, and a F. You understand? So that we need to have some semantics to our glyphs. And first, and again, that is important, that is by no means re required for PDF. So you can have a very well 
designed PDF file that is fully in accordance with the PDF specification, but it's not possible to search for text there, even though there is text. Um, and you don't need that for, dis for displaying the page. So you, you only need it for, for reading it, for uh, searching it, for copying text. And then again, there are, so it's, it's, it's in the same way complex as the encoding that I explained beforehand. Again, you have several ways to derive semantics for your glyphs. And I think what, what you should understand from this slide is the, the general term for that is Unicode. So Unicode is another ISO standard that defines um, uh, names, semantics for shapes. So Unicode, each of the, by as of today, known glyph shapes is associated with a glyph name in the Unicode table. Um, and for instance, you could map from a glyph to a Unicode call point just implicitly as you, if you know that this font is uses or this text is using MacRoman encoding, you have a character ID, that, ca that character ID is associated with the glyph name and from the glyph name you, 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 uh, yeah, you already know which Unicode your code point is as associated with that glyph. Or uh, you may do that explicitly via a to Unicode CMAP in a two-type font. So in a two-type font, okay. Well, we have in a two-type font, you may have several CMAPs, and one of them it could be there just to associate the glyph ID, the, the glyph ID with a to Unicode code point. Uh, yeah, and these are just other ways to derive Unicode semantics from uh, a glyph or from a character ID in the page description. And this is a, a tool, the, I think the, a nice tool in, in uh, PDF Toolbox, the font report, that uh, displays uh, the glyph shape uh, at the top and below the Unicode code point number, the CID in the page description and the Unicode uh, meaning of this. And this is correct, so we have one, two, three, bonnet and end dash. And this is an example where it's not in the same way correct. So we have, for instance, here via the Unicode uh, table, it's associated with a person sign, but that definitely is not a person sign, and that definitely not is, a, is not a dollar sign. So you can see that maybe this, this PDF file just looks great when being displayed, but if you would search for a percent sign, for instance, you would find this character, which is not a person sign, or if you would copy the text out of PDF of the PDF page, you would get a wrong result. Okay, let's close this. Um, a CMAP. I, I just try to provide answers now to all the questions. A CMAP is an encoding table in a two-type font. A font encoding is the connection between a character code and a glyph in the font. So font encoding in a PDF specification, it's called glyph selection or glyph lookup. So these are synonyms for the same thing. A simple font is a one-byte font. A, a CID font is a two-byte font. A type 2 CID font is a two-byte font with an internal two-type structure. And the CID to GID map, I haven't covered that so far is essential in a type 2 CID font. You need that to go from your character ID. I uh, have basically said that. So it's a table that maps from the character ID in the page description to the glyph ID in the font. A symbolic tool type font, we covered that. Uh, and that is just um, recapulating. Uh, fonts are embedded into PDF as independent streams, so the connection to the PDF file takes place via resource dictionaries in the PDF, but the font object itself more or less remains as it was on the disk before, before it was embedded. So I hope this is now became a little more clear, so uh, what these checks mean. Um,
so just a few examples. Character is not white space, but glyph is empty. So uh, our engine finds an empty glyph, so there is no glyph contour uh, associated with it, while the Unicode says this actually is uh, not a white space. So something went wrong there. So either the Unicode or the glyph lookup went wrong. And then the, the, the not dev glyph may be uh, referenced, uh, so this is not correct. It shouldn't be referenced directly. It should always only be used as a fallback. Uh, encoding N3 shouldn't be present for a symbolic two-type font because it would be ignored. A font name is not unique. Um, I will get back to that. Font is not embedded. It's clear. Font reverts to not that glyph. That is actually pretty much the same as glyph in subset font is missing. So the glyph lookup fails, and so the glyph, glyph lookup reverts to the not that. Um, yeah, glyph width info, I haven't mentioned that. You have, I've mentioned you have the glyph width info, and this is important to align one character after the other. But you have two tables. You have one table in the font part and one table in the PDF part. And of course, these, two, these should match. And this is an indication that they, does, that they, that they don't match the, the widths in these two entries, these two tables. Then we've got one more than one encoding and symbolic two type from CMAP. So it's, if symbolic, the built in encoding is used, which is in the CMAP, and then uh, you should only have one CMAP there. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I, I guess, in that case, uh, the PDF won't work. So if there is no CMAP entry in the two type font, you cannot use it in the two type font. So I, I think usually you would then have problems already in your viewer. Text cannot be mapped to Unicode, that is not as, uh, it's not rare, um, but yeah, so it, it's a, it is a limitation, but not for, for rendering of the page. We, I already said this is an important table, and um, wrong encoding for non-symbolic means if it's true type, it should use either McRoman or Benanzi. If that is not defined, then it's wrong. So these are the checks here. And yeah, this is just uh, most of the checks are coming from either PDF X4 or PDF A, so you don't have to read that. And I, I try to hurry a little bit. Um, so most of them are coming from other from from ISO standards, PDF based ISO standards. Uh, two of them are only related to Unicode, so uh, they are only present in PDF A2. And then there are a few that we as color software have invented because we think they are, they indicate that there are or may be problems in the PDF file. Speaking before you got the uh, font name, no, uh, the font reverts to top not, uh, to the not that glyph is similar to the other character references not that glyph. File or not that glyphs are prohibited by PDF X4, but a font that reverts to not that is not covered by PDFX. Yeah, it's, I, I, what I mean is um, font reverts means um, the, 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 the actual font look, uh, glyph lookup cannot be executed, so there is no result of it. And then uh, instead of the glyph that was uh, been looking for, the not dev is displayed. And that is, uh, that should be the same as uh, glyph in subset font missing. So, but what very often our end users, other users are interested in is, is this PDF correct for printing or not? And a font that reverts to not that glyph. It's not. It's not. So that should be treated as an error. Yeah. Whereas font name is not unique, is not of interest in terms of. Yeah. Print. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the, yeah, we could go, yeah, it may make sense to, to assign different severities here to say this is a warning or a more an info or an error. But yeah, so, okay. So now I think it's more, you can see more. So what, what can actually go wrong? Um, so these are a few examples about missing glyphs, um, which might have several reasons. So this is an example that I mentioned beforehand. This actually works fine in Acrobat. So you don't have all these ugly, uh, uh, not deaf uh, characters here. 
you have proper uh, text, but in fact the PDF file is not correct. So and again, this is from the Acrobat point of view, it makes sense to display it, even though it's not correct, because Acrobat is a viewer and not a, a validator. But an accurate program would rather display this one because the encoding is wrong. Because this was a symbolic font used for actual text. So the, the symbolic font, the symbolic flag was a problem in this font. But you cannot simply remove it because you don't know whether, so you have to try whether it works then better than if you would uh, take the, the entry series. Uh, and, what is the answer from a logic side? These two type of problems, which are yeah, introduced it, partly by, by the behavior of acrobats. And there is no in the answer. And, and, and so it's in this case, as I said, in the PDF specification, it's even written that if this fails, if the situation is in, uh, unclear and not according to the specification, then it depends on the, on the uh, application how to deal with that situation. And, <laughs> So it's it's correct it's what they are doing. So. <laughs> yeah, but, but we know that Adobe is this fixing silently problems in the PDF files that get opened in Acrobat or Adobe Reader without knowledge of the user. But when he uses uh, Acrobat or Adobe Reader, it's a reference to, to, to this. Yeah, I mean, it's. Whether the PDF is okay or not. Right. I mean, but, but that is that is as. All the time, since we have PDF, it has been like this. So uh, PDF ta is taken, or a reader is taken as a validator for PDF vendors writing PDF creating programs, but it, it is not a validator. And it's only, I mean, today we are, the industry has many more tools around, and we can only hope that uh, the situation will improve and that reader is not used in a, in a wrong way. So, I don't know. So, Adobe, of course, Adobe wants to sell their products, and from that standpoint, it definitely makes a lot of sense to not for, I don't know, every tense file say, this is not accurate. So. Yeah, but at least if I set up in the preferences of Acrobat, that Adobe reader or whatever should behave according to a PDF-XA standard, do you have that? You have that in the in the preferences? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. This and I don't know. I don't think so. I I know I'm not sure whether it's correct in PDFX. Anyway, let's let's. Uh, <laughs> I th this is <laughs> this is rather funny. I think it's old, so I, I don't know infinitive. And if they still exist, I'm sure they're much better than they were. But it was an advertisement, uh, and it was just funny because they have something. Gegen, we have etwas gegen teure Schiffen means we have something against expensive fonts, and then. Uh, <laughs> don't get. Um, so this is uh, another example, and here is it's an example. We have character ID zero. It's, it seems to be a true type font. There should be a not def, but the actual glyph here is an N. Uh, so the the glyph ID that is actually reserved to use a not def is used for uh, a real character, which is not okay because then the the encoding would refer to this. Would have to refer to the character to the GID zero, which which never should happen. And then we have glyph, glyph sub, sub, substitution, and I, I think this is um, just uh, this was uh, present also a long time ago when when you traveled to US before ESTA existed. Um, we had problems with the encoding here, so that the glyphs were wrong glyphs were displayed. Also here. Where I guess uh, the N, the small N is replaced by the capital K. And interesting here is that could be, have two reasons. The one is uh, a problem with the encoding. So we've understood encoding is complex and the, the problem might be in the PDF. 
But interestingly, the problem might as well be in the application because frequently, uh, and especially if you merge uh, PDF files together, okay, if you merge PDF files together, you may end up with two fonts, subset fonts, for instance, using the same base font name. And that, in a, in a viewer, may create a situation where they use caching in order to be as fast as possible. And then they extract the font out of the PDF file, uh, use it for displaying it, and then they found another text object that uses uh, internally the same font name, and think, they think, okay, it's again the same font, so I don't have to extract it again. I already did that beforehand, and I'm using, and then they're using that one, and that frequent, frequently leads to a situation where you, uh, uh, the, the glyph mappings don't match anymore. And therefore, we have a, a, a fix-up that is called fixed potential font problems, or a profile, and that has a fix-up, and that adds a unique prefix to each of the font names. But uh, a bit redundant problem before was also not a PDF problem per se, it was the problem of the creation application. You mean which one? Uh, you have this? You have, no, no, the slide before the one which was added. You mean this? Uh, you write, no. The problem is in the PDF. Yeah. Is it really the PDF? No, it's, it's actually the Application yeah, and this, and okay, no, it's 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 perfectly okay to have two yeah. font objects with a, with the same font name. Yeah. Before, in the slide before, to have written the PDF is the problem. Yeah. And I said it's actually not the PDF that is the problem. The view shows exactly what's inside the PDF. The reason, if you see that, the reason could be in the PDF file or it could be in the viewer. So there are two possible reasons. Either the encoding is wrong, and that is here, or the viewer is wrong, while the PDF is OK. But still, I'm sorry that I'm so picky here, but I have such discussions with a lot of vendors. It's actually not the problem of the PDF. It's the way the PDF was created, as I see it before. Because you said and it's not the problem of the PDF as specification of a file format. So no, it's a lot of people claim okay. there's a problem in the PDF. The, okay, the PDF file, this particular PDF file is a problem. So that, that's what, what I wanted to say. Uh, anyway, so um, font tools and PDF toolbox in more detail. Um, I think we've covered the first two, uh, the profiles, list potential font problems and fixed potential font <laughs> problems. I think we also covered this one, the, the font report, which I think is specifically useful for, for finding out this Unicode situation in a PDF file. This is new in 9.4. We have in the PDF, explore PDF feature in uh, tools, explore PDF in the PDF toolbox. We have two new views and the most, the one on the right hand side has a kind of a pre-flight symbol and that allows you to really dig very deep into your into various PDF objects uh, uh, amongst which are the fonts and I have two more screenshots here so if you drill into that and open the, the folders you see that there are some small indicators here and uh, this uh, indicators are just letters and that are explained when you open the indicator lookup and uh, I have zoomed in here and then you can see for the font whether our engine think, thinks that there are glyphs missing or corrupt or uh, has a width conflict between PDF and font file and so forth. Um, and this is, these are indicators. If there is a red D uh, over there then that shows that our engine so I think there is a glyph missing or corrupt, and this is the, the screenshot is actually taken from the from the business card uh, that I had beforehand. And you don't have you you also have that information not just for the whole font. You also have that for each of the glyphs in the font. And um, it's not just that. It's also I'm sorry, so. One question: What you just showed uh, is that there was a red R. Five minutes. <laughs> 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 
There was a red R, and there was an explanation why the R was red. The R is it's it's more down. Uh, here R means glyph is missing and reverts to not deaf. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then it's not just that. So you even have information here that is the character code in the page twenty that uh, is by encoding mapped to the one. As a, uh, as a glyph ID, and then you have a Unicode code point as set up in the encoding, and you have an, another Unicode code point as um, set up in the font, and both are 20, so they sync, so everything seems to be correct, and then uh, that goes to space, and you have the glyph bits for the PDF and the font, so this is really helpful for, also for us to, uh, if, if we receive inquiries and support, to find out what actually is the truth in the PDF file. Yeah, this is uh, just a font browser, and, and, the, and the, similarly to the to the Unicode uh, to, to the uh, font report here, you can use that to see the glyph shapes that are set up in your font. So that's what I wanted to cover now. So. These are the font tools in PDF Toolbox, fonts in PDF, issues with glyph selection, and font tools in more details. Uh, any further questions? Then, sorry? During the walk. During the walk? Right.